treasure hunting has captured our imaginations for centuries. I think everybody at some point in their life has dreamed about finding treasure. I knew straight away that it was gold. There was over 30 tons of silver ingots on board, 200,000 coins, gold, emeralds. Once treasure and treasure diving gets in your blood, it's hard to get it out. Sunken treasures remain lost below the waves. Until now. Imagine if we could empty the oceans, draining the water away to reveal the secrets of the seafloor. Now, we can. Using the latest underwater scanning technology, piercing the deep oceans, and turning accurate data into 3D images. This time, how do you excavate a fortune in sunken silver from a wreck lost in shifting sands? It's an amazing amount of money. Why is the treasure from a wrecked Spanish galleon spread over 10 miles of Florida seabed? And how can the world's biggest haul of lost gold bullion be recovered from the Arctic depths? Today, Moving money is simple. These days you push a button, funds are electronically transferred. But in the past, the oceans were a pretty consistent means of moving the world's money. For centuries, treasure ships plied the oceans of the world, packed with silver, gold and precious stones, hunted by pirates, battered by storms, threatened by reefs, and rocky shores. The reason that you would find treasure underwater is the water has been the greatest highway in human history. And where there's treasure, there are treasure hunters. I think people certainly catch gold fever. I think people love searching for things. It's deep in our psyche. Around the world, hundreds of treasure wrecks remain unexplored. As the waters of the oceans begin to drain away, they reveal their most valuable secrets. The English Channel, five miles off the coast of Kent. The grave of an 18th century merchant ship, lost to the waves and carrying a fortune in silver. The priceless wreck often vanishes and reappears under ever-shifting sandbanks. Can draining away the English Channel reveal the wreck and the sunken treasure? January the 8th, 1740. The Dutch East India Company ship, the Roosevijk, sets off from the Netherlands into the English Channel. It's on an eight-month-long voyage to Indonesia, then known as the Dutch East Indies, the center of the spice trade. On board are merchants, soldiers, and a precious cargo. It's said that there were about 300,000 guilders of silver on board of the ship, in silver bars and about 36,000 of coins a fortune in today's money, equivalent to around a hundred million dollars. A few miles off the English coast, a violent storm blows up. The ship hits sandbanks and disappears. 237 men die, and the silver is lost to the sea. Now, more than 270 years later, a team of underwater archaeologists investigate. Martijn Manders heads the expedition. It's enormously unique to do a large-scale excavation underwater. We really have to take care of what's down there underwater or we lose it forever. These are treacherous waters. Yeah. 
To locate the wreck, the team uses the latest technology, multi-beam sonar scanning. We came out and did a multi-beam survey. You create a whole, a whole image of, of the seabed. Multi-beam sonar fires sound waves to the seafloor. The return signal displays the shape and depth of the features beneath. And that way we can start putting that puzzle together. Combining the sonar data with the latest visualization techniques, it's now possible to empty the waters of the English Channel. As the sea drains away, the first challenge the team face is revealed, the landscape under the surface. It's an incredible hidden world. Miles of rolling dunes, like a desert underwater. The Goodwin Sands. Lying close to the surface, these endlessly shifting sands are a deadly threat to shipping. They called it the Great Ship Swallower. It's the graveyard for around 2,000 ships, each running aground in the treacherous shallows. The Rosevik is swallowed here and disappears for centuries. Have the sands shifted enough to finally reveal this treasure ship? Thank you.